Okay, thank you. And to finish this very, very long day, um, I, I will approach this issue presenting you the mid frail study. That, in, in, in our view, is a different approach to other adults with uh, diabetes. I, am, I have divided my, my talk in three main issues. First, I will show you how the focus and aims for uh, managing and approaching diabetes has changed along the time. Secondly, I will try to show you what, in our opinion, is the new challenge in the management of people with uh, other people with diabetes. And finally, I will show you some characteristics of the mid frail study. What has happened with the main focus along the time of diabetes? One century ago, it was quite clear that the focus of this of, of, of uh, treating of management uh, diabetes was young people that die from starvation. At that time, when insulin was firstly used as a treatment, the main objective of people treating patients with diabetes was to avoid death of these patients. Fifty years later, the focus was put on these kind of patients. Patients not so young, middle-aged people with type 2 diabetes due to insulin resistance secondary to overweight or obesity. The issue in these patients was to avoid death mainly from cardiovascular diseases. But now we are in 2015 and the main patient suffering from diabetes are older people and mainly older frail people. You know that 50% of all people with diabetes are older than 65 and around 20-30% are frail. So after many years treating to prolong life and we were very successful in doing so. You can see here how the pyramids of the population have changed since the beginning of past century to this is the forecasting for 2050 in Spain. But this tale has finished. It's not forecasted that in the next years the life expectancy will increase more than four, five, six years. So, the life expectancy is not continued increasing. We have reached our limit. So, in our view, the problem now is not to increase in life expectancy, but improving the quality of the life that we are going to live. That means increase the time of free of disability life expectancy. And this means to increase the quality of our lives. And because of that, when we approach the management of chronic diseases like diabetes, we should think not in avoiding death, but in avoiding disability. Putting again our main focus in the true focus that it's not living more time but preventing function impairment. And this is in other, uh, um, among many other uh, reasons because in other people diabetes do not kill them. You can see here like as the age of the population increases, I'm making the same strategy than Alan. The relative risk for dying due to diabetes goes down. And when you are 75 and when you are 80 years old, the relative risk for dying due to diabetes is 1.2. 
it increases very in a very irrelevant uh, portion your risk for time. What is the problem when you are old and have diabetes? Disability. Diabetes in older people is not going to kill you, but is going to disable you. From a function, from a physical point of view, from a cognitive point of view. And jointly, these two impairments in function are going to have undesired uh, consequences, among them falls and fractures. So there is additional considerations to be done in the management in all the people with diabetes. Is the target, the clinical targets. Now it's reasonably assumed by many uh, bodies that, for instance, the glucose target in people with diabetes is not less than 7, is not le less than 6.5 depends upon the functional status of the patient. If the patient is robust, is in good conditions, you can try seven point five or less, but if he or she is frail or highly disabled, targets around eight, eight point five are rather enough. So function is the conditioning for deciding how to manage glucose targets. And this is the same also for blood pressure, for cholesterol, for uh, uh, anti-aggregation therapy. And all of these concepts has been uh, put together in this uh, review that has been referenced by Alan in, in, in his talk. I think that one of the main, uh, the main concepts that try to express this review is that this is the main part on the, uh, uh, for, for uh, appropriate management for the people with diabetes. And depending the functional status, you are going to manage the patient in a very different way. What about the secondary consequences of the treatment? the adverse reactions. One of them, the most important, is hypoglycemia. When you are frail, your risk for hypos is very high. It's not the same the risk when you, know, you are not frail than when you are frail. And so it's very important to fit the management of the patients to the functional conditions. And this is the group probably um, uh, raising more problems in, 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 the, in the management of the disease. So for approaching some of these, uh, of these challenges, I'm trying to put frailty in the clinical scenario. some uh, questions raised that should be uh, approached properly. These are a summary of some of them. There are now no large scale intervention in all the people focused on functional outcomes. Assessing glucose and, and blood pressure targets fitted to this functional status. No large scale intervention assessing nutritional and educational intervention fitted to the functional condition no large-scale intervention assessing physical exercise programs, no large-scale intervention assessing multimodal treatment combining exercise, educational, nutritional, and clinical management of the patients according to the functional status. And as a summary, we can say that there are no longer-term studies in frail older subjects. Remember that we have said that all the people represents 50% of all people with diabetes, and among them, 20, 25% uh, percent are frail. Trying to uh, cover some of these uh, lacks of knowledge, we have designed the study MIT-FRAIL. MIT-FRAIL tried to assess if intervening on these two steps, two stages of the pathway from robustness to disability is useful 
for patients. We have made a multimodal intervention, feeding glycemic and blood pressure targets for these frail populations, an exercise program fitted to them, mainly based on strength exercise, and also a, nutri a, a nutritional, not a nutritional, an educational intervention based on two main points. First, educate for nutrition and educate for detecting and avoiding hypos. I am the leader of the, of the project. That, that's me uh, leading a car some years ago with the uh, scientific direction or coordination of Professor Alan Sinclair. Here are some of the members of the research team. That is composed by 17 research groups along several countries in Europe. These are the main objective of the study. It's not to avoid retinopathy or microalbuminuria or incident uh, myocardial infarction. The main objective of the study is to evaluate the effectiveness of a multimodal intervention in terms of function and quality of life. This is the purpose of the study. The endpoints to measure this will be changes in SPPV and also changes in quality of life. But we are also facing other secondary points. And I think that probably the most important in these secondary uh, endpoints are an economic analysis and economic costs and healthcare expenditure due to diabetes and its impact on disability. You know that what is really expensive in older people is not their ages, but their functional status. There are many works showing that and, uh, people older than 70 years with disability costs four times that people with the same age but without disability. So lo what is really costly is not to be old but to be disabled. And I think this is a very important message for our health and politic uh, authorities because they used to think that what is expensive is to be aged, not to be disabled. Here is the general uh, structure of the study that is going to be uh, composed with, by uh, 1,704 patients. Now we have recruited around 600 in seven European countries with a mean follow-up of two years. This is the study uh, design, this is an overview. This is, uh, is done by cluster. You know that blinding this kind of intervention is impossible. So we decided to make a, a cluster uh, design, randomized. And also we have some sub-studies to assess mainly the effect of metabolome as a prognostic factor, genome, and some of our studies trying to identify more precisely the components of the exercise of the power uh, to uh, predict responses to treatment. These are the inclusion criteria, very simple. When you design study for the people, the criteria must be very simple. is to be old, to have diabetes, and to be frail. Quite simple. Exclusion criteria are also very simple, mainly to have the outcomes in the baseline, mainly. And these are the interventions, very simple too. These are, for instance, the, 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 the um, variables of the blood samples, very simple. Nothing sophisticated, nothing complicated, because we are not interested in any of these um, biomarkers except as predictor. This is the nutritional 
an, education, an educational intervention, and this is the exercise program. It's a very simple exercise program with these machines, mainly a leg press, to work on these muscle groups. With 32 sessions per year, twice session per week, around 30 minutes each, with a progressive strength and intensity from 40% until 80% as a maximum. We are never going to reach uh, intensities higher than 80% because we are treating all the patients. This for, an adult pe uh, for adult people it will be very low but for an older people it should be uh, uh, rather enough. This is the timing of the study, along two years. The exercise program takes 16 weeks, then is stopped and restart at the beginning of the second year, during other 16 weeks. This is, uh, these uh, are going to allow us to show if there is a deconditioning after finishing the exercise program. And also an uh, economic analysis. We know now that the expected in economic impact of our study may save 3,000 million of euros per year in the European Union if our, if our um, proposals are, are, are right. And for doing so, we have made a very sophisticated way of capturing the different components of economic cost of this kind of interventions. So, finishing, I uh, would like to say to you that disability is the main risk factor impairing the quality of life in older adults with diabetes. Fortunately, many other people develop frailty previous to develop disability. And this is not good, but at the same time, it's good because offered to us the possibility to detect people at risk with the intention of intervening on it. And mint frail in this effort represents a true milestone as the first big research clinical trial focused on the prevention of disability in people at a high risk, like are the older adults with diabetes mellitus. I suppose that in two, three years, we will be uh, able to show you the first strong and big results of this exciting study that I suppose uh, will be able to answer some of the basic questions for the proper management of other people with diabetes mellitus. Thank you.